In this video, we will look at the Java wrapper classes. Now, we saw before in array lists and actually in other types of collections, we can only store object references. Primitive data types are not something we can use in our array lists or these other types of collections. The wrapper class will allow me to use these primitive types as objects, and in that case, we will be able to use these primitive data types inside our array lists and collections. So the wrapper class will wrap these primitive data types. They will wrap the value of the primitive data type into an object. And this will allow me to use these data items inside my array lists and collections. Also, the wrapper classes are helpful if you are trying to convert strings into an integer or a double value. And we have other static methods in other wrapper classes that are useful for us for processing in our programs. So for each primitive data type, we will have a wrapper class that will allow me to wrap that primitive data type value into an object. So for the byte, we have a byte that starts with an uppercase B following the naming convention of classes. Short has short. Int will have the wrapper class integer. Long will have long. Float as float. Double is double. Boolean is Boolean. And car is character. So mostly the same names except for int is integer and car will be character. All of these wrapper classes start with an uppercase character. So to create a wrapper class object, instead of using the primitive data type as our data type, we can use the wrapper class data type, and then we can give it the, uh, the variable name, and when we can assign it the integer value. Now, the integer wrapper class is part of the java.lang package, so we will not have a problem. We do not need to import um, anything in there. Now, since we are using the primitive data type value here, what Java is doing is actually doing an operation called auto boxing. So it will automatically box this primitive value into an object of the type um, integer. Now, if we want to retrieve the data stored in the um, wrapper object and use it as a primitive data item, we can create an integer here, b, for example, and we can get the value that is stored in the wrapper object, a. So wherever we are using uh, a primitive or a wrapper object where a primitive data item is expected, Java will automatically unbox that wrapper object and convert it to a, a primitive data item. Another useful use for the wrapper classes is converting string values into um, integer values, for example, or double values. So we are converting from a string value into a numerical value. To do that, we can use some of the static methods that are available in these wrapper classes. So I'm using the class integer dot, and then one of the methods is the parse um, int. So the parse int, it will take a string parameter and it will convert it into an int um, value. So parse int, we can pass a number that is a string and that will convert it in an, into an integer value. So I can store this in an integer, for example, C, and the value that we have stored in that string value will be converted into an integer. Same thing with doubles. So if I have a double C, um, D, I can go to the double wrapper class and then get the method parse double and then pass a string value, for example, 500.5. And that will convert my string into a double value that we can store in the variable D. There are some other helpful methods in the um, character wrapper class that will allow me to check the type of the character we are um, processing. So for example, we can, let's print out system.out.println, and I want to check if a specific character is a digit. So we can use the character wrapper class and then dot, dot is digit. So is digit, it will check if the character that we are processing, is it a digit or is it not? So if it's a digit, val a digit um, value in there, if it's a numerical value in there, it will um, return back true. So if we run this program, we will be run, um, printing out true. If it wasn't a digit, for example, the character A is not a digit, it will return back um, false. We can also check if this character is a letter. So instead of is digit, we can check if it's a letter. If it's a letter, we will be getting back true. If it's not, we'll be getting back false. So A is a letter, um, zero. If we check it, it will get back false. We can also check if it's uppercase or lowercase. So instead of checking um, if it's a letter, we can check is uppercase. And that will check the character that we have, if it's an uppercase character or not. 
So this is uppercase A. If when we check it now, it should return back true. 